hey guys and welcome back to my channel my name is Liba Sampereki and on this channel I make content about everything to do with university life nursing school and international student experiences so if you'd be interested in this type of content do not forget to subscribe and turn on notifications at the bottom so in this video we're going to be talking about study tips because I realized that right now most people are entering into their exam study period and it's going to be exams for most of November November and December so I just thought I should come here and give you some tips that I've used which have helped me over the past couple of years like in university I've been getting an average of 82% for all my semesters so it means that the tips that I'm using are working and I would love to share them with you so the very first tip is you need to create a study schedule if you haven't already created a study schedule by now, I would suggest that by the end of this video, you're creating your study schedule. So how I create my study schedule is I list out all the topics that I need to study for each module. So currently I have one, two, I have four main modules that I'm covering. So I've got midwifery, low risk, midwifery, high risk, then I've got unit management and then skills lab or skills that I need to learn from my OSCE. The form part of midwifery, but I like to put it in under its own bucket because I write a separate test from them, but the information does merge in some context. So I write down all the topics that I've had. So I've calculated that I've had plus minus 40 topics that that I need to study and then I need to calculate how many days I have till exam starts so I have about 30 days by the time I release this video it will probably be less but anyway let's stick with that example so I've got 40 topics and then I've got 30 days and then I take my topics divided by the number of days that I have and it gives me a total of 1.33 something so that's about one topic per day and round it up to like two topics like could it be weird for you to to study one topic and a third like that just doesn't make sense so i usually just round it up to two but what i know is that the minimum that i need to study every day is one topic and sometimes there are some topics that link and you might end up doing five topics at the same time instead of the one so it sort of balances out so for you it might be different you might have 60 topics but then you've got less days then you might end up having a lot more topics to study so that's why it's very important that you start creating your study schedule early and you start studying real early that's the whole point of this whole thing is you need to do it early so that you have enough time to get through all the topics and then how i use my study schedule i don't do the whole thing of on this day i'm going to study these topics the reason why i don't do it anymore is i've realized that sometimes i would schedule all the hard topics towards the end and by the time i get to those topics it's already during exam period and i don't really have time to go speak with my lecturers about it and that sort of thing so how i've started to create my study schedule is i write down all the topics and then on each specific day i just choose from the list like okay today i'm going to tackle this topic and then i study it and then after studying it and reviewing it and that sort of thing i rate it between red orange and green so red means i am totally useless at this topic i don't know what is happening i'm so confused i love that jazz orange is i somewhat know some stuff but it's still not a hundred percent and then green is i know what's happening in this topic i can nail it so after that topic i categorize it according to red orange and green then the following day i would choose another topic and then i study and then i categorize it red orange and green and then on the third day i would look at the topics that i've studied in the previous two days and then take if there's any red or if there's any orange and then i restudy those topics and then i recategorize it to red orange and green so that it helps me to go back to the topics that I don't know well so there's though so that the topics that are green I leave them for later on because I know those topics really well so every time you just choose a new topic and then you can go back to the ones that are red and orange it just really helps you to stop wasting time instead of starting with the really easy topics and then you leave the hard ones towards the end and also the benefit of doing this is you avoid cramming because trust me cramming does not work if you're going to leave your studying towards the last week before your exams it's really going to overwhelm you because you're going to realize like oh dang there's actually a lot of things that i need to study so do not leave it for the last minute and i do understand that in the last few weeks 
before exam starts you've got a lot of assignments that i do you've got a lot of tests that i do for me i use those tests and assignments as a way for me to review the information so for example these past two weeks i've had tests so i use those tests as a way of me studying so that when i am now officially studying for the exams i know i've already reviewed those topics and then i just and then i can just go back to them if they're category red or orange and then if they're green then i just move on to the next thing so you don't have to start from scratch when you have finished your assignments you can just use what you've learned from your assignments and then just add on to that so i really hope you've understood this part of creating a study schedule and making sure that you're doing it as early as possible to just relieve you of a lot of stress guys if you create a study schedule please take it as it's a big promise that you're making to yourself and it is something that you need to stick to because most of us we get really excited we watch a youtube video or someone tells us oh hey you must create a study schedule to really get you motivated to study and all of that jazz and then like two or three days into it you're no longer following it and that sort of thing so that's why it's important that you do it in advance so that you're not studying a lot of topics in one day because when you do a lot of topics in one day then it does get tedious and you get so tired and that sort of thing so if you did in advance it will work much better but unfortunately if you haven't started already this is your call to action to get started the next step that i take is whenever i am studying i try to make sure that each module I'm studying it in a different way because if you're constantly doing the same thing over and over again it's going to become really exhausting for you to study and if there's no variety in how you study you're gonna get tired like we all know that studying is not fun it's tedious it's annoying it's frustrating but if you switch it up it just gives you a little bit of motivation knowing that you're studying things in a different way so please avoid the rereading the highlighting rewriting PowerPoint notes it, it really wastes time so during the course of the semester what i do is obviously every single week we've got presentations that we need to do so from those presentations i make the bulk of my notes so that's where all my studying will come from and then once i am studying again or revising that topic then i create mind maps mind maps really help to consolidate all the information because when you're making notes from powerpoints you end up adding a lot of extra information that is not necessary or things that they will never ask you like so you can even avoid doing that whole creating of the notes from the powerpoints i do it because i want to sell my notes but if you're not going to do that then just go straight from the powerpoints to creating a mind map so that you've got something that's more and for you to revise so definitely doing mind maps helps and then also you can do flashcards you've got modules like pharmacology or with skills lab stuff like procedures that you need to do those are great to use um cue cards for because the pharmacology is a lot of medication and they have a lot of classes so that whole list thing really helps when you've got flashcards and then what i love doing with skills lab stuff is i like because we have procedures and there's a step-by-step -step process of how the procedure works so i literally write down the process and all the extra information that i I need to verbalize because you know you need to verbalize every damn thing when you're doing a procedure in nursing so i love using cue cards for that another thing that you can use is watching videos using pictures from the internet especially with topics like human biology or just biology life sciences in general using pictures and videos really helps for you to understand the concept because with human biology it's about visualizing what is happening in the human body if you do not understand what is happening you're never going to understand all the terminology that they're going to be using and you're never going to be able to interpret the different scenarios that they give you so videos are amazing great videos or great people that i love to watch are human biology topics is crash course has got amazing ones and then i'll list down a few in the description box they're not coming to mind right now but watching videos really helps especially if your lecturer is not that great at explaining things for you to understand because each lecturer caters for a different type of student so if your lecturer is just not doing it for you then just find other online lecturers that you can use there are so many people that are doing amazing work to get information out there on the web so you're on youtube already you might as well get started and then the next thing is you can use group study sessions this one it comes with pros and cons pros is you are teaching someone else so you trying to explain it in simple words to so someone else really helps you to consolidate the information that you've learned and it helps to show that you actually understood the work because if you can't explain it to someone it means that you obviously do not know the work so, and someone else can also explain 
that same information to you in a different way that you did not realize and if you guys do pass papers together it just makes things so much easier you guys can branch someone how to answer the questions and the very last I tip I can give you here about adding variety to your studying is past papers guys trust me past papers would do the things for you I will give you a personal testimony when I was in high school I was doing physics like physics was showing me in flames like I had C's and D's in physics like physics was just not working for me and then I came to university we had physics and chemistry again and I was just like oh goodness this topic like this subject was just not it for me but trust me I did past papers and I got my A's in physics and chemistry so trust me doing past papers really helps because the thing with past papers is it's quite it phrases the certain topics in how it's going to be asked in the exam so if you have seen this question and you have answered it it'll be easier for you to re-answer it in the exam because you have seen it before and if you do i usually go three years back so we're in 2021 now so i will do from 2019 downwards or upwards whichever way you're going to take it so 2019 to 2021 because if you go far back a lot of things change every two years so if you go too far back it might not really give you a correct gauge of how the exam will be but you can go as far as you want it depends on the time that you have and how and how i love using my past papers is i usually study one topic and then i do questions on that sometimes you're never going to find questions for that specific topic so i will usually create questions for myself and then i just test myself after i've studied to make sure that i've understood what i was learning because sometimes we blank out when we're studying and then when you do the questions and you actually realize oh okay I actually wasn't focusing and then you can re-evaluate and all of that yeah so guys past papers like if you're gonna forget anything in this video past papers will save your life do past papers as previous students ask your lecturers your tutors if they can give you past papers trust me they will save your life the next important step is i make use of class time class time is an opportunity for you to ask questions so before you even go to class make sure that you've gone through the topic that you guys are going to be covering that specific day because once you have gone through it that's you reviewing the information once in class that's the second time and you get clarification of things you didn't understand you get an opportunity to ask questions so you can understand better so by the time you're reviewing the information or restudying it for an exam it's your third or even your fourth time going through that information so it would have stuck in your mind and also during this period of november till december when we do exams your lecturers are going to be giving you an opportunity to ask questions from topics that you guys might have done at the beginning of the year and you've forgotten the stuff so use these opportunities to ask your lecturers questions for them to re-explain certain topics please don't expect your lecturers to reteach a whole topic that's just unreasonable like that's never going to happen you have very limited time so that's why it's important that you start your studying early so that you've gone through majority of the work so that when your teachers give you an opportunity to ask questions or to practice certain skills again then you've got you know you've got some knowledge of what you're doing instead of coming to class and you're blank you have no questions by the time you actually study then you're like oh dang i should have used that opportunity to ask questions and you're confused by yourself obviously your lecturers will still be there for you during the study period and during the exam session but they're really not going to have enough time for them to reteach you something because remember they're busy with marking your exams and all that just so make sure that you're using the most of the last lessons that you have before the exam period and the next thing is your study space the place where you study really makes or breaks <laughs> the whole study session please avoid studying on your bed like your bed is scheduled for you to sleep so if you would train your mind that you can study on your bed but also your brain knows that that's a place for you to sleep you're most likely going to fall asleep on that bed and not focus i love studying in an environment where there's other people studying i know covid and having online classes has really ruined it for me but just having someone studying around me or even when it's on a phone call or something i don't know i just feel inspired and motivated to study when other people are studying but i love having areas that are quiet i need to be at a desk if i'm on a bed or one of those weird benches or i'm sitting on a couch you know it just doesn't work for me so i need to be on a proper desk so you need to find out what works for you some people like doing it outside some people like doing it in a coffee shop you know because it's busy 
some people just like that noise when they're studying so whatever works for you you need to figure out but avoid places that are going to distract you make you fall asleep they have a lot of distractions like tv phone all of that so your social media needs to be switched off like i've already spoken about certain apps that you can use to block uh, all these sites when you're studying you can find the video over there but make sure that your study space is as useful as possible because you don't want to be studying but your study area is just making it detrimental then you're just pretty much wasting your time because you're not going to remember anything because you're so distracted next thing is you need to reward yourself because <laughs> studying is not easy it's hard and getting into that whole swing of studying every single day it's really hard so you need to be motivating yourself in some form or shape that could either after every successful study session you're giving yourself your favorite chocolate favorite snack watching your favorite show episode and that sort of thing but please do not use your rewarding system as a way to procrastinate don't tell yourself oh yeah i'm just relaxing for like 10 minutes or so i deserve it because you know i've been studying well and then it ends up being a whole movie marathon that you're doing so make sure that however you're going to reward yourself is actually not going to push you back and take away the results of the work that you've done already but it is important that you reward yourself it will just keep you motivated because you know like okay if i do this i can, I can then i can just have that sweet or whatever it is that it or whatever the motivation is going to be for you and the last reward that you can give yourself is sleep guys cramming and doing all nighters does not help anyone like i haven't done all nighters since first year like first year it was you know an experimenting period you didn't know what was happening but now ever since i've created a system for me that works i haven't done all nighters ever actually i think the latest i go up to is like 12 o'clock so all nighters really do not help you because after hours you're not you're no longer focused your brain is tired you're exhausted and then you just you know you're no longer functioning so the whole study session that you're going to be doing is not going to be helping anyone you still need your eight hours because when you are sleeping you're consolidating i know i love saying this word a lot and you're allowing your brain to actually interpret understand what you were studying and make it make sense because when you're studying something your brain links it to other things that were happening around you like certain smells that were there um the way you were studying what you were eating and also previous information that you've learned so you need to give your time you need to give your brain the time to put all those things together and just helps you to memorize better but if you are exhausted you're not resting the whole study session is not going to be helpful to you it's going to be so detrimental it's just going to be you wasting your time so make sure that you are taking care of yourself but at the end of it all please make sure that you're taking care of your mental health do not stress yourself do not give yourself unnecessary anxiety take it one day at a time but as long as you're doing the small steps that's how you get to the bigger goal it doesn't have to be large steps but as long as you're doing something every day to lead you to be better prepared for your exams you're doing an amazing job so i wish you all the best with your studying um during the study period i might be a bit offish on <laughs> youtube i I don't know if i'm going to be having videos going online but we'll see as time goes but anyway this was just me coming here to give you guys some advice and motivation to get into that whole study mentality because guys it's end of the year already we're in october november december and we are done so anyway and the next week friday 12 p.m so we can time have an awesome day bye guys Thanks.